most of people is actually part of the dream of one person and that is Dominic. He registered the organization and he had every intention of working at it and launching it and doing a lot of work himself. When Dominic was found to be HIV positive, the personal trauma that he went through gave him, I think, the motivation to try and make it easier for people who were caught in the same kind of situation. माझं नाव आहे वैशाली सातडेकर मी छोट्याशा गावातून आलेली आहे तेव्हा माझं माझं मी अस्तित्व माझंच मी काय कर ठरवलेलं आहे आणि मी दोन हजार बारापासून शॉप उघडलेलं आहे आणि माझं नवऱ्याने सगळं बिझनेस चालू केलेलं त्याच्या त्याच्या तब्येतीमुळे तो त्याला साथ दिलं नाही तर मी मधोमधे येत होते मला काय समजे ना झालं जेव्हा असं समजलं की माझं काय अस्तित्वच नाही आहे म्हणून जेव्हा मी दुकानावर येऊ लागले तेव्हा रडत होती जोरजोराने काय म्हणून माझ्या नवऱ्याला असं झालं मी असं झालं काय करू आता काय नाही असं समजलं होतं परंतु मी धीर धरला धीर धरून मी त्यामुळे त्यांच्यासोबत राहिली त्याला दवाखाना केला काही ना काही एक गेलं दोन हजार बारामध्ये एकदम लय त्यांची तब्येत बरोबर नव्हती जरा 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 हॉस्पिटलमध्ये जाऊन कोणी कोणी मला सांगितलं की पॉझिटिव्ह पीपलची मिटिंग चालते आहे तेव्हा मी पॉझिटिव्ह पीपलला गेले आणि त्या मिटिंग अटेंड करायला लागले मिटिंग अटेंड करता 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 मला समजून आले मी एकटीच नाही आहे सगळे असं लोक आहे काय काय पीडित आहे कसं कसं माणसाचं आहे पॉझिटिव्ह पीपल्सची मिटिंगला भरपूर लोक येत होतात तेव्हा मला अश्विनी मग पीटर सर आणि काय काय स्टाफमध्ये लोक होती त्यांनी त्यांनी मला बरंच काय सांगितलं भिऊ नकोस काय भीतेस ते आम्ही पाठीमागा आहे त्यातून मला माझं मनाचा विचार एकदम बदलून गेला आणि मी काहीतरी करायचं असं ठरवलं काही करायचं म्हणजे माझ्या नवऱ्याचा बिझनेस होताच छोटा तो मी सांभाळला आणि सांभाळून अशी सांभाळता सांभाळता मला पॉझिटिव्ह पीपल्समध्ये एक लोन लोन मला भेटलं ई डी सीमधलं तिथून मी माझा बिझनेस वाढवला आता मी म्हणजे बिझनेस मी सांभाळते माझा नवरा नाही आहे आणि मी माझ्या पोराने सगळ्यांना सांभाळून मी बिझनेस चालवते आणि आता मी इंडिपेंडंट आहे आणि मी चांगली राहते आणि हसून खेळून दिवस काढते dress that is uh, in a way very familiar to me because my friends and I would visit Dominic here but today as I came I had to reorient myself because everything is different it became a big part of my life for some time especially so when he was given interim relief and he was uh, allowed out of that isolation room where he was uh, isolated for a f- couple of months and then he came home and he couldn't go out so we would come here and we would visit him but things have changed and the house is all derelict now it's falling apart in a sense perhaps in a sense symbolic of all the difficulties and the hurdles that dominic had to cross and also 
every single HIV positive person finds that over the years uh, difficulties do keep piling actually and uh, perhaps things are comparatively easier today than they were 25 years ago when positive people started work. Life isn't really easy if you are either infected or in some way affected by HIV AIDS. In 1992, positive people started functioning. We began with a kind of spurt of creating awareness. And then slowly, slowly, we found our feet, so to say. And then we moved away from here into rented places. Um, to begin with, um when when positive people um, you know there was Loretta Pinto and and Isabel Santarita was in Tamsin um, it was just you know four or five of us along with maybe um, one of the earlier staff and uh, we actually used to go around um, talking about HIV you know at bus stands or we would be like I remember one year we got someone to make posters on what exactly HIV is. Positive people got a little bigger, we got a little more funds and um, we had a few staff who used to actually go out into schools um, and talk to the students about HIV and eventually we developed some kind of modules where we spoke about relationships, we spoke about sexuality and uh, actually we went to court and uh, we got the law modified although we could not get it repealed. This was the law that said that anybody who was found HIV positive in Goa had to be quarantined and deported. Actually what they had, the law had in mind was uh, tourists who were identified as HIV positive and they were quarantined and they were supposed to be sent back to their places of origin. But Dominic was of course from Goa and therefore there was no way we could allow him to be quarantined for life. We heard about Anand Grover and when we contacted him Anand was extremely generous and he took up the case with you know a very open spirit with a great deal of knowledge and he was completely committed to the case from day one the case had already been filed by Dominic's mother to release him from incarceration because in Goa at that time there was what was known as the Goa Public Health Amendment Act which amended the Public Health Act to the effect that if a person was suspected of being HIV he or she those days we did not talk of transgender people much would be forcibly without consent tested and on test if the person reported to be HIV positive then the person would be separated from the community and incarcerated and that was the status of Dominic when he launched a case in the Goa bench of the Bombay High Court to challenge his incarceration and also he challenged uh, the act which allowed the government to do that. Dr. Gilada had already talked to me about the human rights issues in HIV the person should not be discriminated, the person is like any other person just because the person has HIV there is no question of any transmission by ordinary um, 
kind of relationships with the person. But despite all that, and me being a human rights lawyer, otherwise, when I went to Goa, I normally used to stay in a, a small hotel. But I went up to my room, and the room was, the door was ajar. And I saw from the door a person lying on the bed. And I just read that Dominic had actually been released on, for whatever reason. And though I had never met him, I instinctively knew that it was Dominic. But the thought that went through my mind was, you'll be surprised, what is this HIV positive person doing on my bed? And then suddenly I realized, my God, what am I thinking? So my innate prejudices were coming to the fore. But having said that, the case was done and Dominic and I became quite good friends. And I came to know much more about HIV from him and on a personal interaction level than I would from a book. The case was actually dismissed, but the government was persuaded not to bring in a drastic uh, law which had mandatory testing, breach of confidentiality, and then isolation, which I called an isolationist law. And as time went by, this was in 88, things were not looking too good for Dominic. As you know, by 92, there was no triple combination therapy. And just in the beginning of May, I can't remember the exact date, two days before Dominic died, I got a call from Claude Alvarez, a friend of mine from Goa, uh, who also knew Claude well because they stayed in the same village, Para. Uh, he told me that, Claude told me that Dominic was in Breach Candy Hospital and I should see him on Friday before I was to go to Delhi. So I went to Breach Candy in the evening and I met Dominic. Dominic actually was a very good looking person. But on that day he was skin and bones. I was so apprehensive about what would happen to him. But every time I would ask or venture to ask how he was, he would just turn around to to me and ask me what I was doing in terms of law and then he asked me a fatal question as it were. He asked me firstly whether I was still doing HIV work and I said of course I am doing it. Then he extracted a promise from me. He asked me to do and continue to do HIV work and without batting an eyelid and without really seriously thinking about it, I said yes. Only later I would realize what impact that promise would be to me. Anyway, I left and I got a call on Sunday that Dominic had passed away and there was, there was going to be a funeral ceremony at Max Muller Bhavan in Mumbai. And to cut the long story short, I basically had to keep the pledge that I made to Dominic. And from 92 to 97, I actually became completely obsessed with HIV. It is as if Dominic had actually taken over my soul. I'm not a religious person, but I can tell you anybody I met, I would only talk about HIV. And everybody thought I had gone mad. And then in 1997, we had done a very important case, which became to be known as MX versus ZY where the Bombay High Court, through Justice Tipnis, gave a very important judgment. And the judgment was <coughs> that a person who is HIV positive cannot be denied employment because if he is HIV positive, he is not debilitated. So long as the person was functionally fit, that is, is the person able to do the job? Has he got the right qualifications? And there is no significant risk in transmitting of HIV in the workplace. Then the person cannot be denied employment in a public sector. So that was a very big victory for us. I had redeemed the pledge of, uh, that I made to Dominic. And that was the occasion for me to go again to Goa and relieve myself of that pledge as it were.
So I had gone to Goa. I went to his mother's house, Lucy D'Souza's house. And you won't believe it. I actually, I'm not religious as I said. I only saw Dominic in that house. And then I suddenly broke down crying. And when I got up, there was no Dominic. And I related this to people and they said, well, we can understand what you were for the last five years. So that is a very uh, cryptid story of Dominic's relationship with me. I had recently moved to Mumbai uh, in search of uh, uh, employment and I, and I got news from Goa from my family that uh, Dominic was uh, diagnosed with uh, uh, HIV. I remember crying and feeling so devastated because uh, he was a young man I'd uh, kind of grown up with. And, and to think that he was in isolation in a, in a former sanatorium, my heart broke and uh, I didn't know what kind of support he'd have, uh, how his uh, mother, his aged mother was going to cope. So I uh, took the decision to return to Goa and uh, do whatever I could to be of uh, some support to him. The last uh, one year of uh, Dominic's life was uh, was very intense. Uh, he got uh, he got very involved with uh, the organization that he'd set up, Positive People. He'd already started lobbying on behalf of uh, HIV Positive People. He start uh, he started to attend uh, workshops and seminars, and uh, he was hopeful of a lot of uh, achievements. He, he wanted to do a lot for people in similar situations. As a person that I knew, he was a very, very kind-hearted soul, always thinking of the other person. Actually became very well known in HIV circles because of his ability to speak so well, because of his compassion and passion for people who uh, became those living with HIV. And he did a lot of work and in, fa in fact he became a celebrated HIV activist. Not only in India, but around the world. Positive People has been the pioneer in HIV. And so we also try to look at areas which are not so well looked after by other people. We have touched uh, thousands of lives, trying our best to make a difference to them. Because another thing is there's a lot of discrimination in society, in different sections. So they have to undergo a lot of difficulties, hardships. So they need a lot of counselling, they need a lot of boost. And then a lot of advocacy needs to be done so that people can change, the health services, the government departments can change. Um, we work with female sex workers. We're working with orphans. We're working with uh, orphans, as in those who are infected, those who are affected. We are working with injecting drug users. Um, if I look at the uh, female sex workers, I find that today we have young women, we have youth who are daughters of the sex workers they're in the age group of 18 19 and the sad part is that they continue to do the work their mothers do that's one area where we think at least we've been talking about it we've been saying hey we we don't need 18 year olds getting into the same trade but what can we offer what can we do another area with which we are facing problems of late is the adolescents who are no longer in the children's homes. So when they come out, <coughs> we are having a uh, lot of issues in trying to tackle them because they are now in, in a different plane of living. But there are several issues with them that is regarding employment, regarding their daily living. And also there are several other issues 
of uh, behavioral issues, sexual issues, understanding so many things, learning to be on their own feet and naturally they are still children yet. So they also get sometimes carried away, they also have their own interests, they also do certain things which are should not be done or they are going slightly off track. So we have a, quite a huge challenge in front of us. When I was born, I don't know, uh, I didn't know that I am positive. Then um, after three, four months, my mom and dad died. So after that, I went to, uh, I shifted to this uh, hostel in Hyderabad. So there I stayed for maybe five years. Then they tested the blood of all children. So they came to know that three people are positive over there. In that even I was there. Then I went to, uh, they shifted me to other hostel. Then, then they were taking care of us like, they were good to us. And uh, they used to give medicines and all. Then after that I came to Goa. In 2010 I came to know that I am positive that uh, doctor had counseled with me saying that you're positive four years ago i met positive people i like to speak to peter sir he's a he's he's a counsel i mean he's a ngo person also and he's a friend also like like my father he's good to children and um, he helped me a lot to make my documents for the traveling for the hospital nurse we had a camp children camp, sunburst camp, so we we all involved like all children. I didn't knew that more, there are more children who are positive. Then when I came to that camp, I had a, I, I was happy like first I used to think that I'm alone, like positive. I'm doing my computer course right now and uh, I'm working also in the NGO. Yeah, I, I never had a problem like all were good to me. Mm, like I never, I I never think about this that I am positive and all. So I'm happy with this life.